Landing on an aircraft carrier is often described as a controlled crash. You're trying to hit a target 150 feet long and a few feet wide at 150 miles an hour. That target's on a ship travelling away from you and moving up and down with the waves. You know, it can be very challenging at times, especially, you know, at night and bad weather, you know, if there's various emergencies going on. Um, initially, with a student coming through, it'll be challenging. You just want to keep flying yourself right down. Don't anticipate touching down like a conventional airplane sure. trying to smooth out the land. So this is where I want to stop aiming towards the front. I want to leave yeah, you're looking real good there. Real good. And full power. You got it. Three tries and you, you got it. Outstanding. So there, nailed it. How hard can it be really landing on an aircraft carrier like that? Seriously though, this simulator isn't just about training rookie pilots like me. It's about finessing the design for the ship to make absolutely certain that it's compatible with the aircraft. By the time the Queen Elizabeth class carriers enter service, it'll be more than four decades since British pilots have operated from a conventional carrier. And that means lots of key skills have been lost in the mists of time. The UK has a steep learning curve um, and we have a lot of technology we need to work out to try and make that, uh, that task as easy as possibly can, to reduce that training burden as much as we possibly can. Um, and hopefully running guys through here that will minimise that shock. This simulator is more than just a training aid though. The Defence Review decided out of the blue that Britain would ditch the Stovall or hovering version of the F-35 in favour of the more potent carrier variant. This facility is basically making a key engineering tool as we go forward. What we're going to be using it for is looking at design and evaluation of how we integrate the F-35 onto the new QEC carriers. With the first ship already largely built, the final cost of the modifications won't be known until this simulator's research is complete. But delays and re-engineering costs could see the final bill for the two carriers soar to more than £6 billion. Will Inglis, Forces News, Wharton.